Welcome back to the Chess Goals YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to go over an article that I wrote on the Chess Goals blog titled, Can Blitz Chess Make You a Better Chess Player? This is what a lot of people wonder. Is speed chess good for my overall chess? Stay tuned. We're going to get to the answer coming up next. So if you want a link to this article, I will drop it in the description below. Feel free to read through it at your own pace, but I'm just going to kind of summarize it in this video and talk through some of my thoughts about speed chess and applying that to overall chess strength. So I learned chess back in the early 1990s and a movie that was very popular when I was a kid was Searching for Bobby Fischer. And one interesting thing with that movie is the main character, Josh, sort of had two chess coaches. He had his coach, Vinny. Vinny played in the park quite a bit and played a lot of blitz chess and taught Josh to play a very tactical and aggressive style, always playing for the initiative. And Josh's other coach, Bruce Pandolfini, was a more serious player, played a lot of over-the-board classical, and he believed that speed chess was bad for Josh's chess ability, and playing in the park was bad for Josh's chess ability. So what I want to do is kind of go through some data and actually figure out, okay, what does data show based on other chess improvers? We have data from the Chess Goals survey. We had over 400 people take this survey, and we asked them, what percentage of the time do you do different chess activities? And let's figure out, what is the optimal amount of time to play speed chess? So the first thing I did was I asked players in the survey, which rating category do you consider to be the best measure for your own chess improvement? And this tallest blue bar on the left-hand side, that's for chess.com blitz. So most players are saying chess.com blitz is the category that they're using to measure their improvement. So keep that in mind. About 44% of players chose a blitz category overall, and 56% of players chose a slower category. So that's kind of spread out across rapid uh, daily, USCF, FIDE, ECF, and other. Those are all lumped together. So almost half and half, speed chess versus slow chess. Then the next thing we did was we created some study plans based on the data. So you can check out the free study plans. There's a link in the description below. But those plans will kind of tell you what percentage of the time we recommend that you play slow chess and fast chess, and what percentage of the time that we recommend you study. And we do have a couple specific plans based on your goals. Like there's one called the Intermediate Rapid and Classical Plan specifically for players that want to improve on slower games. And in those plans, 25 to 30 percent of the overall time spent on chess, we recommend to be blitz time. So that's just an, a general across the board recommendation right there. And this is going to vary a lot, but about a quarter of the time you spend on chess can be spent on blitz for improvement that's also efficient. And the reason I say this is because every blitz game that you play, you can create takeaways, right? So if I have one hour to spend on chess today, and if I play three plus zero blitz games, which is something that we would recommend maybe for the advanced level, I can get a game finished in five or six minutes. In one hour, I could maybe play eight or nine games and quickly review those games and get takeaways. That's huge. Whereas if I play one, 15 plus 10 game, that might run a full 50 minutes. I can review the game and get some good takeaways, but I might only get two or three total takeaways when I could have had 10 or 20 takeaways even from playing Blitz. So that's something to keep in mind. The more games you play, the more takeaways you have, the more flaws you notice in your game, the more strengths you notice in the game, in your game. And it's easy to use your games to analyze things from those games, right? Like if you have struggles with end games, use your games to find end games that you had issues with. Go back and look at them with Stockfish or go look at them with a study partner or just play through it on your own and work on those end games specifically from your own games. Um, so there's a, a ton of value to getting a lot of overall games in. All right, so let's go to the stats now. Looking at this chart here, there's a lot of black dots. And there's this blue line cutting across the middle. So what's happening here is on the y-axis, we have this variable called outperform. What outperform is 
is it's the expected rating gain for a player based on their age, their current rating, and how many hours a week they spend on chess. And then we take the amount of points they actually gained and subtract off what we expected they gain. So what this is doing is it's adjusting for the age of the player, the rating of the player, and how much time they put into chess, right? These are the three most important variables for chess improvement, time spent, your age, and your current rating. As we get older, it's harder to improve. As our rating goes up, it's harder to improve. And if we don't spend any time on chess, it's harder to improve, right? So all of these things matter. So what this is saying is to be efficient, you want that blue line to go higher, right? So this is a measure of efficiency. You're outperforming what we would expect based on age rating and time spent. The x-axis here, it says blitz z. This is percentage of overall chess time spent on blitz. And what this chart is saying is overall, it's pretty close to zero, but you've noticed there is this bump up starting around probably 45% of chess time being spent on blitz. It peaks out around maybe 65% and then gradually starts to go back down to zero when you hit 100%. Now, I'd never recommend playing 100% of your time on blitz, but this chart shows that it could be an option for some players, right? Some players are definitely outperforming, some are underperforming at 100% blitz. But I think it's more interesting now if we take this data and we stratify it based on the ratings of the players and also the goals of the players. So let's start with the goals of the players. So what I did here was I created two lines. The teal line is for players that want to improve in slow chess specifically. So this includes rapid chess, classical chess, and daily chess. And what we see here is optimal, the most efficient amount of time spent on blitz for players that are looking to improve on slower chess is somewhere right around 12.5 to 15%. And this is pretty consistent in the data. You know, you see a lot more players up above the zero line than you do below the line, zero line in this 12 to 15% range. As we get above 50%, this line stays right below the zero mark, right? So players are less efficient at improving their slow chess when they have a lot of time spent on blitz, but not by much. Um, this could tell you maybe you can be more efficient by hitting this sweet spot right around 15%. Now, I think it's more interesting to look at the blitz line. If your goal is to improve on blitz, it's very important to put a lot of time into blitz. And that makes sense too. If you're spending only 10 or 10 or 15 percent of your time on blitz, you're probably underperforming what you could be by 50, 60 rating points a year. That's a lot. But you can outperform if you spend maybe 50 percent of your time or more on blitz. And I think 50 is probably around the sweet spot. I don't like to recommend spending much more than that on blitz for long durations at least. Um, for a short duration, you could try something like maybe for a month, you spend 95% of your time on blitz and just hammer out game after game after game and go through and take a few takeaways. That could also be something useful to do if you find that you study way too much chess and you want to get back into playing. Take that short duration and say, hey, I'm just going to focus on playing and I'm going to play a lot of blitz, play a lot of games and gather a lot of takeaway data. That's something that you can do from time to time to kind of reset yourself. So now let's look at the data split up by rating level. And I have three categories here. We're going to look at novice and beginners, less than 1,100. Intermediates, 11 to 17. And advanced expert is 1,700 plus. So for novice and beginner players, I recommend playing about 45% of the time on 5 plus 5 games specifically. The reason I like 5 plus 5 is because if you're a novice or beginner player, you still want to have enough time to make quality moves. And if you're playing 3 plus 0 or 5 plus 0, it's really not enough time for a beginner to develop good habits. 5 plus 5, I think, is kind of that sweet spot for blitz. That's the fastest time control you should play as a beginner, in my opinion. And you could spend around 45% of your time playing 5 plus 5 games. 
But if you look at this chart, it does matter what your goals are. If your goals are to just improve on over the board classical chess, I would say bring that blitz percentage down here, get down to the 10% range. If your goal is to improve on blitz, maybe you bump up that 45% and get into that 50, 60% range, maybe even 70%. Uh, the data does get pretty sparse up here, so I think we should put a little less weight into this line, take that line with a grain of salt, but definitely somewhere around 50%, maybe up to 60% for blitz, I think would be good for beginners if your goal is to improve on blitz. All right, intermediate level. This is where a lot of our chess goals members are, 1,100 to 1,700. It's a wide range of players that are already solid players. They know all the fundamentals, but they're having hurdles along the way. So I think I find a lot of players hit a range in the 1100 to 1700 group where it's like, okay, when I'm at this level, I really start to face resistance. So this is where players start to really hone in on what they need to study. And I think there's a noticeable bump for players that want to improve at slow chess, which is a lot of intermediates I find right around this 12.5% mark. So 12.5% of your total time being spent on blitz. And I think if your goal is to improve at blitz, again, you could bump this all the way up to maybe the 50% mark. Spend half of your time playing blitz if you want to get better at fast chess. For those slow, serious players, I think, you know, play at least 10% and maybe aim for 10 to 15% of your time playing blitz. Really try to force yourself to do it. I think there's a lot of good reasons to play blitz. It gets you those extra games in to create takeaways. It helps improve your intuition. And it really gives you more chances to see a bunch of different things in your games that you can work on. And I really harp on like chess goals members, hey, play more blitz, play more chess. This is why. There's a lot of benefits. I think it's an efficient way to improve to get some blitz games in. Advanced and expert level. This is where you'll find a lot of your competition doesn't want to play slow games online. And I think it becomes much more efficient to play blitz. And because you're already at the advanced or expert level, you've developed really good habits for the most part. And you can think through your games more quickly. So I think it has even more benefits to start playing faster games. So here we recommend somewhere around 45% of the time on blitz in the study plans. You can bump this up or bring it down based on if your goals are fast or slow chess. If your goals are slow chess, maybe you go around the 25% mark. That's probably what I would do if I wanted to improve on slower chess. But if I'm focused on just getting sharp, shaking some rust off, I'm definitely looking to spend 50% of my time on blitz just to really keep those uh, intuitive juices flowing make sure that I can see things quickly over the board. And one other thing I'll say is, think of this almost like trying to improve in track and field, for example. Like maybe you're a four to 800 meter runner. It can be beneficial to go for long runs that are longer than 800 meters, but also to do sprint work, to improve your speed, right? Chess is kind of the same way. If your goals are all the way on one of the extremes, like I want to get good at playing six-hour chess games, I really don't recommend you go any slower than that for your training, right? Or if your goal is to improve on hyperbullet, I don't recommend you go any faster than hyperbullet. Um, maybe you can train some certain positions where you say, I'm going to give myself 10 minutes on a position. That could be your slow training. Or you could do puzzle rush where you say, I want to do each puzzle in one second. But if you're on the extremes, you really can't be trying to force yourself to train faster or slower. But if you're in the middle, always try to train a little bit faster and a little bit slower in addition to training at the control time control that you want to improve at. So keep that in mind. There's a lot of flexibility here. All right, let's conclude this article. There's two main points, I think, that I got from doing this research. Number one. Blitz chess is helpful for overall chess improvement. I don't think there's any level where I would say, don't play any blitz. And a lot of players will say, Matt, I hate playing blitz. Uh, I really struggle. I make really bad blunders. You know, it's not fun to play blitz. 
this is training for you. If you're going to play classical chess, you will reach scenarios where you need to make quick decisions, especially in time pressure. Use blitz to help train your emotions, right? If you tend to get upset, this is something you can work on, right? Because that's going to carry over to slower games too. So blitz is an awesome training tool. There's a lot of benefits. Uh, the second takeaway, so number one, blitz chess is helpful for overall improvement. The second one is scale the percentage of your playing time spent on blitz based on your goals. If you want to improve at classical chess, that's where you can reduce that blitz percentage, maybe down to the 15%, 25% range, depending on your rating. And if you want to improve at blitz chess, look for that 50%, maybe even up to 75% for stretches. So this is the article. Is blitz chess, is speed chess good for your overall chess improvement? I think the answer is yes. I've gone back and forth a little bit on this over the years, but the data is pretty convincing to me. I think you need at least a little bit of blitz chess for efficient chess improvement. I hope you guys like this article. Please leave your thoughts in the comments below. Maybe we'll get a little discussion going because I know there's some strong opinions on both sides. Uh, make sure to like this video. Click the subscribe button and we will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.